Today's video, I want to answer some questions that are out that you may have about FFLs, getting them, uh, different types of FFLs, why you would want to get them, and then the process to go and get them. So I do have an FFL, but there are different types of FFL. So the type of FFL that I have is a manufacturer of small arms ammunition. So anything under 50 caliber and that's not uh, armor penetrating. So this is it right here. Um, I have it. Uh, I don't use it a ton. The primary reason that I got it is in one of my previous videos, I mentioned that I can't sell my cast bullets and I wanted to be able to sell them primarily, honestly, to friends and family. And you might say, well, if I want to sell it to friends and family, you know, they're not going to wrap me out to the ATF. But if they're shooting at the range, they see a fancy red, white, blue, silver powder coated bullet. This random person asked them where they got it. They pointed at me and then they found out I don't have enough. I, I just didn't want to deal with it. With gun laws, I don't even try to get around them. If you're interested in getting your FFL, you're not going to want to get the type that I have, which is an 06, which is a manufacturer of small arms ammunition. You're going to want to get the 01 FFL, which when you go to your local storefront, that's the type of FFL that they have. So there are different types of FFLs. Um, essentially, there's three main categories, which is going to be dealer, manufacturer, and importer. So in the dealer category, you have your 01, which is probably the type of FFL that you want. Um, your 02, which is your pawnbroker. Um, an 09, which is, is for destructive devices. So that's going to be like rocket launchers, hand grenades, all that stuff. Um, I've never met anybody like that. Most of those are going to be like military contractors. And if you want one of those, then the paperwork is going to be a nightmare. Um, there's an 03 FFL, which is 30 bucks. That's for collectors um, of old relics. Um, so then there's the manufacturer category. So in manufacturer, there's an 06 FFL, which is the type that I have, which is a manufacturer of ammunition. Um, small arms ammunition. There's 07, which is going to be a manufacturer for firearms. Um, then there's o there's the 10, which is going to be for manufacturing of destructive devices, which you'll probably never even worry about that. Then there's 08 and 11, which are just importers of either firearms or destructive devices, respectively. So if you're going after your FFL, my guess is you're going to be going after the 01, which is going to be a dealer for firearms, which is what most people have. Um, you're going to be, if you're crazy like me and you just want to sell freaking cast bullets, you're going to have to go to your 06, which it's only 30 bucks, so that's pretty nice. Um, or your 07 if you want to manufacture firearms and sell those. So now the question is, how do I get my FFL? So you can go to the, the web page, the ATF web page, which I'll put a link in the description below with a link to the form that you need to fill out. So you're going to have to fill out that form. Um, you're going to have to go get a passport photo and you're going to have to go get fingerprinted and then you're going to put everything in the envelope and send it to the ATF. Now, once you get it to the ATF, there will be an individual at the ATF that essentially gets assigned to help you through the FFL process. That's part of what your fee goes for. Um, and they're going to make sure your form's filled out correctly, they can run the background check, um, and then you're going to have an interview. And it's an in-person interview, or I guess lately it's been over the phone. With the 01 FFL, what your storefronts have, is you're going to have to keep records for 20 years. Um, you, you're going to have to deal with um, background checks and all that stuff. So at the interview, instead of being like a 15 minute interview like mine was, uh, it's going to be like two, two and a half hours, and they're just going to go through all this stuff. Um, but the thing that you need to realize is the ATF is on your side. They, most people at the ATF, um, unless Biden gets his way, they are gun friendly. They, these people, they're retired police officers, but they're, they're very gun friendly. And their goal is to get more people involved in firearms and to keep you out of jail. They don't want you to go to jail. So they're going to make sure you understand the rules. They're going to leave you a business card. And if you ever have questions, they are your source, not your buddy who once had an FFL, not this random Joe Schmo who is really into guns and thinks he knows the stuff. If you have questions about what you can and can't do, contact the ATF directly, your, your contact there, um, and they, they will help you out. So you're going to go fill out the form. They're going to go through the interview. Um, and then after that, if everything's good and you know they feel like you're reasonable, then they will send you your FFL in the mail um, a couple weeks later. And that's pretty much it, honestly. It's a pretty straightforward process. It does take, they're a little backed up right now, so it took me a little over two months to get mine. I do want to talk about some of the third-party websites that are there to help you get your FFL. One of them, a very common one, if you just search, is Rocket FFL. They do have some very useful information, um, but I will say this is something that you can do yourself. 
you could just fill out the form. Um, it's a big form, but it's longer than your concealed carry form, but you can totally do it yourself and save yourself the 50 bucks that they charge and put that money towards your FFL fee because it's like 200 bucks for um, the 01 FFL. Uh, another question you might have, have is you actually do not need a business to have an FFL. You can do it as a sole proprietor of just you doing it. Now, if you get, ever get a business entity, then you ha would have to resubmit the application to add them, add your business entity to that FFL. So if you're planning on dealing with any decent sum of money, you should just go ahead and um, get a start business and add it right onto your FFL from the get-go. It'll make things simpler. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions about getting an FFL, put it in the comments below um, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. If you have two complicated questions, then I'll make another video on it. Okay, thanks for watching.